For nearly 50 years, the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs has protected the rights of residents and helped the business community thrive. When the COVID-19 pandemic struck, the department led the way on eviction protections as residents lost jobs and rents skyrocketed across LA County in places like this neighborhood near Hollywood. The department is also extending a helping hand to immigrants and ensuring safeguards in the legal cannabis market. Welcome to One on One, where we dive deeper into the issues of our time with the county leaders driving solutions. In this episode, we sit down with the head of the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs to learn more about how the county is stepping up to help those in need. Los Angeles County is the most populous county in the country with over 10 million residents. In such a large and diverse jurisdiction, it takes a specialized workforce to protect the interest of consumers and businesses. Department Director Rafael Carvajal leads from life experience, addressing the struggles of working families through a very personal lens. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you for being here and thank you for having me. You lead LA County's Department of Consumer and Business Affairs, also known as the DCBA. And there are so many things that this department handles, and we're gonna to get to a lot of that. But I wanted to start with the hot button issue that exploded during the pandemic and affects mostly everyone that lives in Los Angeles County. And that is the balance between eviction protection and the rights of rental property owners. What is the DCBA doing on both those fronts? A great question, and it absolutely affects everybody in in LA County. Over 80% of those living in LA County are renters, so there's two sides to that coin. For tenants, what we're doing right now is making sure that they have resources, information, and understand their rights and responsibilities uh, to help them navigate the complexity that is of facing an eviction or the unaffordability of living in Los Angeles. We have multiple programs in place. Our department handles our tenant protections hotline where our live counselors are answering calls day to day, answering questions from um, our LA County residents about protections, resources, what their rights are and responsibilities are as tenants. We do the same for landlords. That hotline, we receive calls day after day from landlords trying to understand what they can and can't do. There's 88 cities in LA County. There's governance by uh, the state and also some federal rules that apply. So you are helping both sides. Absolutely. The renters that may be facing financial hardships, but also now you're also helping these property owners that may also face financial hardships due to this problem. There's two sides to the coin uh, with, with the landlords in the situations that they're faced. We have asked of them to bear a significant burden over the pandemic with the uh, eviction protections and eviction moratoriums. In fact, the department has designated $68.6 million in grants to qualified landlords through the Los Angeles County Rent Relief Program, which will provide direct financial assistance to landlords to help them mitigate the economic impacts caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and tenants' inability to pay rent. We want the landlords to continue to provide and make this housing available. Because if it's not available, where are folks gonna live? I mean, we ultimately don't want them to get to a place where, where they're dealing with foreclosures, but we do have a foreclosure prevention program. Rafael Carvajal, who was born and raised in Los Angeles County, has experienced an eviction firsthand. I was 17 years old and it was difficult because my father had passed away a few years before. So we're dealing not only with that trauma, right? And then we're dealing with, now my mother is a widow, with five kids trying to figure out day to day how they're gonna make it. But if it wasn't for one of the neighbors who actually took the time to inform themselves of what was available to them and what their rights were in that situation, they shared that information with my mother and that resulted in, in a different negotiation, a different conversation with the, with the landlord. Stay Housed LA aims to keep tenants understand their rights and help eligible tenants protect their rights in court. To date, they have reached over 1.4 million tenants, connecting over 22,000 of them with legal services. 
Going back to the topic of the economy, LA County, as you know, ranks as one of the largest economies in the nation. And I understand the department recently established the Office of Labor Equity. So tell us about what this office does and also the wage protection program and how DCBA is stepping up to protect workers. What we're aiming to do there is to centralize all of our worker protections within one entity. Uh, the intent there is to make sure that all workers in the unincorporated LA County understand their rights. And is there a uniform minimum wage for LA County? There isn't. It's really complicated, right? Every municipality has the ability to implement their own minimum wage. So if someone does feel like they are being unfairly compensated, where do they file a complaint? Call us reach out to DCBA and they could remain anonymous. Recently, we settled the largest case uh, that our department has ever managed, $677,000, helping 309 employees. Uh, a restaurant during the pandemic um, chose not to pay their workers uh, the appropriate wage. Uh, one person reached out. That's incredible that one person made the phone call and that one phone call helped hundreds of workers, right? Absolutely. That's the power of your department. Yeah, and it's actually the power of the people, right? That person that chose to pick up the phone, despite her fears, reached out to us and it resulted in this. The department recently launched a Center for Financial Empowerment. What is it? We focus on underserved communities. Mm -hmm. Our programs aim to make sure that folks have access to safe uh, uh, banking products. We're able to put, to put over $8 million in the pockets of our residents through this program. That's a combination of ta tax returns and access to child tax credits. We're getting ready to launch a Leave a Legacy program, which looks to provide free legal services uh, for estate planning. Uh, many of us, the biggest asset we'll ever own is our home. And one thing that we're seeing as LA County starts to age is that a lot of parents, grandparents, older individuals, their families aren't ready or in a position to receive that property, right. whether it's because they don't have a will, they don't have a living trust. We have a small dollar loan program for domestic violence survivors. We're directly trying to address the impact, the adverse impact of the redlining that happened here in LA County. In addition, DCBA recently launched LA County's Green Line Home Program, which will provide eligible first time home buyers with a $35,000 forgivable loan to assist with down payment and or closing costs. The Department of Consumer and Business Affairs obviously deals with consumers a lot. And one thing that consumers deal with is fraud, right? Elderly are targeted or other vulnerable communities. So what is a DCBA doing? If you come across something where you're not getting your value for what it is that you paid for and you need assistance trying to figure that out, I encourage everybody to call us. We have a hotline to help us prosecute some of these issues. Shifting gears, we've seen an explosion of cannabis shops almost in every corner here throughout LA County. And the DCBA also oversees the Office of Cannabis Management. So tell us exactly what they do. What we've been tasked for by our Board of Supervisors is to establish an equitable commercial cannabis licensing program within the unincorporated county of, of Los Angeles. We do want to ensure that we have a safe and accessible marketplace for those that choose to consume. When we talk about the gray market, the challenge there is that you don't know what you're purchasing. So in collaboration with our Department of Public Health, we did establish our emblem program. That emblem lets you know that the product in there is safe that it's been tested, and that it's a legal operation. So it's not a perfect substance, so it's a balance that we as a society have to achieve. DCBA also supports the immigrant population through its Office of Immigrant Affairs, which helps asylees, refugees, and other migrants seeking humanitarian protection navigate services. Additionally, the office helps educate the public on how to avoid immigration fraud and refers people to legitimate organizations that can help them with immigration matters. Another one of our major focuses here at DCB is ensuring that folks have access to justice. Mm -hmm. So outside of the public defender's office and the alternate public defender's office, we house the largest amount of legal services programs in the county. Uh, whether it's folks that are facing eviction that need an attorney, whether it's funding self-help legal access centers that are scattered around the county inside, uh, inside courthouses that provide services to individuals there. We have the county's mediation program, which helps folks settle matters before they escalate to needing to go to court. 
Another thing that we recently did too is our board invested in some mobile offices. When we think about folks needing assistance and needing to come all the way down to downtown uh, to access these services in person, in particular when I think of folks like my parents, my grandparents, um, who had limited resources. For example, my mother didn't know how to drive and they had to, she had to take a bus everywhere. Taking a bus, the metro, to come to downtown uh, to see us, it's difficult. So we wanna make sure that we're more accessible. Aside from their headquarters in downtown Los Angeles, the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs has additional offices in Whittier, Lancaster, and East Los Angeles. So this is our Whittier Resource Center. We recently joined uh, and became part of the DCBA family. This provides us an opportunity to bring all of our services out here to the Whittier community. South Whittier is unincorporated LA County. We have about 82,000 uh, residents that live here. You were sharing a personal story that your mom had to take a bus to appointments, et cetera, because she did not have a driver's license. She did not drive. So I'm sure that personal experience gives you more empathy and allows you to be able to understand the issues that some of our residents have, right? No, I, absolutely. Everything that we do in, in this department is something that I've either faced, you know, growing up, I've been evicted. When we talk about the immigrant experience, I am a, I am a product of that experience. My parents, like many, uh, immigrated into the United States for a better life for themselves and for their children. Mm -hmm. So everything that we do, is, it's, it's centered around the experience and supporting our community members. Rafael, thank you so much for giving us all of this information. How can someone get in touch with the Department of Consumer and Business Affairs? They could come visit us here in downtown LA at our, our, at our headquarters. The majority of our interactions are happening online or, or on our hotline. They could reach us at 1-800-593-8222 or on our website, dcba.lecounty.gov.